G'day ladies and gentlemen, this is Draw with Jazza, I'm Jazza, and today we're talking about facial construction. Facial construction or construction itself in drawing is essentially laying down the basics before you get into the details. Let's say in the example of looking at a house, someone might look at the house and say, yeah, that's a beautiful house, it's a finished product, it's great. But knowing the details of how it came to be can get really complicated unless you look at it simplistically enough. So kind of using that analogy with, with drawings, there are a lot of details and a lot of you know big things that you can get lost in. And sometimes you might focus too much on you know object orientation, foreshortening, construction lines, all, the, all these things, um, and actually lose sight of, of the very basics and what is most important. And that is the shape itself, that is the object, what you are drawing. And so what we're going to be doing today is looking at how to approach the very basics of constructing a face, a head. As an example, to show you what I mean, I'll, I'll work backwards with you from an image that I previously drew. This is just some random superhero trick that I improvised uh, drawing. Um, a very big, like a very early beginner might look at that and think, okay, well, I can't draw that if they're, you know, starting off. Um, and that's because you might look at it and see all the things that you can't do, like whether it be, you know, the magic flamey thing or the, the colors and the depth and things like that. But when you break it down into smaller pieces and the simplicities, it's a lot easier to see how it comes about. So you can see here in this image that, uh, essentially the line work itself has a lot of messy crap behind it. That's the construction. So if I go back to show just that, they're my construction lines. And before that are my earliest construction lines. And that's how I begin drawing a figure. So to put that into context, that's your example. I'm going to show you how that's done with a face. In terms of drawing whole bodies and stuff, I'll, I'll get to that in a lesson of its own. But for now, I want to talk about the face. So in a face, we're essentially, with our construction lines, we're drawing a skull, right? So if I draw a skull on the right here, facing this way, right, we have the basics of the skull. Okay. That's my very roughly drawn skull. My construction lines are a very simple form of that you're essentially echoing the simplest, most inner part of a human body. And that is the bones. Unless, you know, you're going into stupid details. Okay. So that right there, I'm done. That's my construction on the left for a, for a head. And that's all you need. Um, what, what I generally do is I draw a circle to represent the large ball part of the head and then you add the jaw underneath. Now the cool thing is these can change shape but I'll do a, a generic shape for now just to kind of show you how it comes together. So you have the ball and then the jaw. Then I add two other lines. One is the direction line which which direction the face is. So in that example before it was here. Where I draw that line indicates where the middle of the head is facing. The second line I draw is the eye level line. Um, that can be a horizontal line, whether up or, or low on the face. Um, but the other thing that I use it for is to indicate which direction the head is facing um, vertically. So if I curve it up like that, you can see that the head is looking up. If I curve it down like that, you can see that the head is looking down. So f for this example, I'll leave it straight on. Then. Beyond that, I start to add the details. So I construct where the eyes go. So they're my construction lines for the eyes. So you can see it kind of just falls into place exactly where you know, these lines are dictating that they should go. Next is the nose. The nose is kind of like the arrow of the face and it doesn't matter if you draw the eyes or the nose first, but they're generally the, the two things that I do first, either the eyes or the nose. So add the nose in there. <clears throat> then I like to add the ears and the mouth. And then we get into the shaping. 
So we're not going to keep this shape exactly the way it is. You actually tend to curve it around the shape of what the face is. So we know that we always have a bit of a, a brow up here. So we make that bump out a bit, make the, bring the cheek out a bit, and we jut the chin out a little bit too. So using those construction lines, I can add a layer on top and do some refined drawing. So I can go over my construction lines and add the details. I will do tutorials later on about what I'm actually doing, go into details of how I approach drawing eyes and mouths and nose and all that jazz. But for now, I'm just showing you how it lays on top of the construction line. There you go. Next, what I'd like to demonstrate is how the shape of these construction areas can completely change how the character looks. So for example, if I'd like to draw um, a sadistic, evil, thin sort of character, I'd start off with essentially the same sort of shape of the, the ball, but I'd really work with the jawline and the, the face of the, the face shape. So I'd have a really pointy chin like that. I'll enlarge this so you can see it a bit better. And then I draw the direction line. And for the interest of, of doing something slightly different, I'll tilt him down and have him facing down like that. Next part, I'll do the eyes. Now I want to angle this guy. He's, I want to have a very pointy sort of face. So I might actually change that chin. I might pull that chin out a bit point it like that. So that's the face. There you go. Now, I'll add my eye construction, my nose, and my mouth. Ears. And this guy can wear a hat because he's a very stereotypical looking villain. There you go. So they're my construction lines. Now let's go in and add the details. Do the basic shape of the hat without going too crazy. Okay. Now I want to keep the features nice and pointed. I want to have the eyes a bit thinner than that. So he's really squinting menacingly. One of those, he reminds me, reminds me slightly of the spy versus spy dudes. Um, one thing that you'll notice with very thin people is that their, their cheek juts out a lot more because there's no fat underneath it, um, as well as their chin. So to, to accentuate someone's thin look, it's often quite good to give them a bit of a bony chin like this and then have it sink in straight away. One thing I also find with mouths is when you show the upper gum in the corner of a mouth like that, that bit, for some reason, it adds a lot of character depending on the attitude. So a sort of sneer or yell, it, I, th I feel it kind of accentuates an emotion. You don't want to do it all the time because it lo it'll lose its effect. But for when you can use it in good situations, it's very, very cool. So there you go. Yeah, we've got our first character in place there. <clears throat> I should probably finish off the hat. There you go. Cool. Done. 
So there's an example of how changing the construction lines can change the face entirely. I'll just do a couple more quick examples without doing the uh, proper line work after, just because I don't want to waste too much of your time. But I'll just do, let's say, four different examples. Let's get one really broad-headed guy over here. With a very shallow jaw and low eye line. So that dude will look, end up looking very cute. The, as a general rule, when the eyes lo are lower on the head and there is more forehead space and less cheek and jaw space, they tend to be a bit cutesy. So children often have lower eye, le eye level on the face. This one here, let's, let's do a, uh, let me think. Let's do what I call, well, I don't call them noodle heads, but they kind of look like noodles. So I'm not giving this guy a jaw. Generally, I give a jaw and then a neck. But with this guy on the left here, his jaw merges into where his neck will be. And I think that's very a, a very cool, effective look for dopey sort of characters. Um, <clears throat> I'm not being very adventurous with my angles now, am I? So... Let's have these guys look around a bit more. So left and right. And let's give a... Uh, let's have a very uh, big lower jaw. Actually, I'm going to grab that and widen it. Make that lower jaw even higher up. Have him looking up with a high eye line. And I'll get this, I'll hit this guy will look very brutey. And then I'll have someone over here looking down. I'll have I'll draw a girl looking down over here. So there you go, we've got our basic construction lines. Um, I won't draw the construction details in, I'll, I'll just go in and do the line work straight away. So I will do line work, but I won't construct it first. I'll, it's essentially the same thing, so if you don't want to sketch in all the details before you start, you can just get straight into it once you get used to the process. So let's start over here on the left. So this guy, I didn't give him an eye line, so I should probably do that. Oops, sorry, that was the wrong colour. Not that that matters, but OCD, you know. A little obsessive compulsive. All right. Let's let's give them rough nose shapes first as well. So that's the rough nose shape here. Uh, let's give this guy a point. Let's give this guy a snout. And let's give this girl just a normal girl nose. I think the head here needs more of a nose just to have something different. So give a big fat nose. So I'll lighten those so you can see the line work better. Let's go over this guy first. Let's give him little gumdrop eyes. Pointy nose. And draw in his details. Buck teeth. So like I said, the uh, the noodle-shaped head can really add a, a bit of a soft look to a character. So there's that head there. Let's do this guy here. We can... Let's open the mouth. Oops. You gotta love keeping your uh, hand on the... The undo keys. Whoops. Draw in the snout. Let's give this guy really broad eyebrows. Mm. 
broad brow, I should say. Give him a bit of a bum chin. So there you go, there's that guy on that angle. You can see essentially how easily it comes together. Once you get used to using the construction process, what we're essentially doing is um, simplifying something that would be very complicated without doing so. Um, you can quite easily tell the difference between someone who does a lot of drawing professionally and someone who just kind of wings it by looking at their construction lines. If they have construction lines and if they look like, you know, they're refined and they know what they're doing, then they know what they're doing. But often people who don't use construction lines, their drawings end up having less form to them. They feel less tangible. Draw this girl. Oops. Remember that when you draw eyes on a curve up or down, have the have the eyes follow the curved line. So you can see here, there's that big curved line there, and the eyes actually fold around it. Right? Same with here. You notice both those eyes on the female and on that male at the bottom, they're quite tilted. But that's because the construction is tilted as well. And when I said before about those who use construction lines, their, their drawings end up having a lot more form. That's exactly why. Because when you get the basics in and the basics are done well, the final drawing or shape or whatever it is, has depth, has dimension that you can't really improvise without getting ready to put it in. Let's give her a little thingy. So there you go. There are three very short examples. And you can see quite easily how construction influences a character. Um, when people create a character that they want to be memorable or that they want to be able to draw over and over again on different angles, especially in animation, knowing the construction inside out is one of the most pivotal parts of that. I hope that this lesson has been informative for you. Thanks for joining. I hope you enjoyed this video. Links are below to download the original files for reference. Remember, if you animate or draw something cool, be sure to share it on Newgrounds.com, the internet's best source for animations, games, art and music. Until next time, see you later.